पाया नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीरयत नस्तप्रयेशु वभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवाया भागवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टक वेर रीडिंग श्रीमद भागवता कैंटो टेन चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन टेक्स नंबर फिफ्टी टू दिस चैप्टर इज इन टाइट Brahma stealing the cows and cow and cowherd boys, the boys and cows. Okay. अनिम अध्यर महिमदीर अजद आबीर विभूति भी चतुर विमसाते बिस्तवाई पारिता महद आदि भी अनिमद्यर महिमद्यर अजद अद्यबीर विभूति भी चतुर विमसाति भी स्तब्बाई पारिता महद आदि भी अनिमद्यर महिम अद्यर अचद अद्यबीर विभूति भी चतुर विमसाति भी स्तब्बाई पारितत महद आदि भी Anima Adhyay, headed by Anima, Mahima Adibi, by opulences, Aja Adhyabi, 
headed by Aja Vibhuti B by potencies Chatu Vimsati B twenty four in number Tatvai by elements for the creation of the material world. Parita, all the Vishnu Murtis were surrounded. Mahat Adibi, headed by the Mahat Tattva. Translation, all the Vishnu Murtis were surrounded by the opulences, headed by Anima Siddhi. By the mystic potencies headed by Ajja and by the 24 elements for the creation of the material world headed by the Mahat Tattva. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki In this in this verse, the word Mahitma B means Aishwarya or opulence. The Supreme Personality of Godhead can do whatever He likes. That is His Aishwarya. No one can command Him, but He can command everyone. Sad Aishwarya Purnam. The Lord is full in six opulences. The yoga siddhis, the perfections of yoga, such as the ability to become smaller than the smallest, anima siddhi, or bigger than the biggest, mahima siddhi, are present in Lord Vishnu. Sadaishwaryai Purno Yaiha Bhagavan CC Adi Lila Chapter 1 Text 3 The word Aja means ma Maya or mystic power. Everything mysterious is in full existence in Vishnu. The 24 elements mentioned are the five working senses, Panchakarmendriya, the five senses for obtaining knowledge, Panchagyanendriya, the five gross material elements, Panch Mahabhuta, the five sense or objects, Panch Tanmatra, the mind, Manas, the false ego, Ahankar, the Mahatattva and material nature, Prakriti. All 24 of these elements are employed for the manifestation of this material world. The Mahatattva is divided into different subtle categories, but originally it is called the Mahatattva. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanye Na Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadhamayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sokrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha 
हे कृष्ण करण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंठा राधा कंठा नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गोरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणामा हरि प्रिय वंचकौपातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति पवन एभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधार श्रीवास दे गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वर हियरिंग हाउ आफ्टर लॉर्ड ब्राह्म हेड स्टोन अवे द काउस इन द काउ हर बॉयस and krishna had replaced them then he came back brahma came back to see lord krishna and he saw not only lord krishna but lord krishna revealed so many vishnu murtis in all of the different cows and cowherd boys and then he revealed also so many different living entities all coming to worship lord vishnu and we are hearing how some of these different living entities who the, we're we're hearing the identity of these different personalities who are coming here to worship lord vishnu as described here today we're hearing how the mystic uh the mist mist yoga cities appear and mention anima headed by anima the power to become smaller than the smallest of course lord krishna has these kind of powers he can become smaller than the smallest because he is the the super soul in the hearts of all living entities and that super soul is described as being very minute one ten thousandth of the tip of the hair so very small smaller than the smallest and at the same time he's bigger than the biggest because lord krishna also expands as mahavishnu and in the form of mahavishnu he's laying on the kashyo ocean and from his body so many universes are coming out just like perspiration coming from the pores of our body so this is lord krishna's powers he has these wonderful potencies all these yoga cities prabhupad talks about one yoga city prapti city and he described how with prapti city you can acquire something from very far away and he told how he had met one man who asked him what kind of fruit do you like and probably i think he said pomegranate so then the man said oh pomegranates he said they have the best pomegranates in kabul kabul afghanistan right and so the man who held out his hand and a pomegranate appeared in his hand he had the power he had that prapti siddhi he could go you know, against the laws of nature so these yoga cities are you know people really endeavor greatly to get these kind of yoga powers in china sometime for some time there was a, a thing called qi gong very popular qi qi means that the 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 living power within the body 
Chi Gong. Gong means no. Anyway, Chi Gong. It was up to get mystic power. Their goal was to get some kind of power, mystic power. And people went to great austerities, and a number of people went crazy just trying to get this kind of power, you know. Of course, Prabhupada speaks about how the yogi may develop the power that they can walk across water. But it will take them a very long time to develop that kind of power. You know, it may take even many lifetimes before they even can develop that kind of power to be able to walk over water. But so what is the value of the mystic power? Because you can take the boat. You go down to Hulagat and you get on the boat and you can go to Navadweep. And it's 10 rupees, is it? Or 2 rupees or something? It used to be 1 rupee. I don't know. It's always increasing. But anyway, huh? 3 rupees now. Okay. Okay, 3 rupees. So 3 rupee yoga. Right? The value of their yoga is three rupees that they can walk over the water. But people will spend many lifetimes or many years in great austerity just to try to get that kind of power. So these yoga powers are naturally given even to the pure devotees of the Lord. It's mentioned in the fifth canto Srimad Bhagavatam in relation to Lord Rishabdev. Lord Rishabdev, of course, is an expansion of the personality of Godhead. And he naturally had all the yoga powers, but he didn't use them. He didn't want to use them. He didn't like to, he didn't want to use these powers. And similarly, People, of course, would come to Prabhupada and want to know, do you have mystic power? Can we see your power? And Prabhupada would say, these devotees, they are my power. That before they were all fallen, degraded, so many bad habits, but now they have become, they've become saintly, pure devotees. They said, this is my mystic power my yoga siddhi. So yoga siddhis, sometimes people think, oh, if you were to show some yoga siddhis, you could attract many devotees. And Sadaputta mentions Sadaputta Prabhu, uh, he wrote some books about these kind of things, and he explains, he said, there are people who have these kind of yoga powers, that by their mind, they can bend spoons, just in their mind. By their mental power, they can make the spoon bend over and the table can float up, come off the ground. A heavy table can begin floating. So there are people who have these kind of powers, but it doesn't do any good. Just like what they say about Lord Jesus Christ, that there was a lame man and he told him, get up and walk. And the man got up and he could walk by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ. So what effect do you get from that kind of power? You attract a lot of sick people. All your followers will just be sick people who are coming to get treatment. They want to cure their disease. If you can produce gold, you can produce some, you know, valuable jewels and so on. You get a lot of greedy people who are looking for wealth, who want to get something from you. So you get these kind of followers. You know, we see that like that man who was there in South India before. He used to produce things in his hand. So, so many people would gather around and, you know, they're all hoping you'll give something to them. They want to get. So you, you can attract these kind of people by the yoga powers. That's not the goal. You know, we want to get people who are interested in cultivating real devotion, pure devotion. Just like before the, the Maharishi thing, they were doing that thing 
learn to levitate, right? And there's a big program, there's a lot of propaganda coming, we'll teach you to levitate, you can float off the ground. Do we see anybody floating off the ground today? Where are they? There's nobody, it's all nonsense, nobody. Huh. So, you want to attract cheap followers, you can do it, it's easy. But if you want to get people who are actually interested in the real goal of life, then it's a different thing. So, the point is made that Lord Krishna is the possessor of everything. He has all these yoga cities, he has all these opulences. Uh, some people talk about God in the poor man, right? That Daridra Narayan. And so Prabhupada said, what kind of God it is who is poor? How is it God could be poor? You know, it's ridiculous to think like that. Rather God means that person from, what, from whom everything has come. So he's given everything away, he's become poor, is it? <laughs> no, he's complete, right? Prabhupada quotes this verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. At the very beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj has given a number of verses glorifying uh, first of all Lord Chaitanya and then Lord Nityananda and then Advaita and like that. So the third verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Yada Dvaitam Brahmo Panishadi Tadapyasya Tanuba Yad Yad Yada Dvaitam Brahmo Panishadi Tadapyasya Tanuba Yad Oh, I forget the verse now. Anyway, describe Yad who, who is worshipping Lord Chaitanya? You must recite that verse every day. Sadaishwar ye purno yaiha bhagavan sashvayamayad na chaitanya krishna jagati paratarvam paramiha. Right? I've dropped the set, second line. Second line is describing Paramatma. The first, the, what the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence coming from his body. And the antaryami, the super soul within the hearts of all living entities, is but his localized plenary portion. He is the supreme personality of Godhead himself, full of all opulences. And Krishna Das Kaviraj goes on to establish that this is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he is actually this personality. He is full of all opulences. He's not lacking in any way. He's not a poor man, although he never worked. Mother said she never had to worry, right? Mother said she sometimes, there's nothing at home. Lord Chaitanya would go out and come back with some gold and give her. Where did he get it from? Nobody knew. <laughs> but he, because he's the Lord himself, so he has no scarcity. Everything is provided. And Lord Chaitanya also blessed Advaita Acharya. That even because Advaita had so much faith in Lord Nityananda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed him that even if the goddess of fortune has to go begging, your home will never know any poverty. Everything will be provided by the great, divine grace. So this is the nature of the Supreme Lord, that he is full of all opulences. In, in Bhagavad Gita, when Lord Krishna speaks, he's described Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. So the meaning of Bhagavan means one who possesses wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength, renunciation. These are the six opulence. Parasaramuni has described Bhagavan to mean like that. These six opulences. So we see how Lord Krishna displays all these opulences and similarly also Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also displayed these opulences 
his different pastimes indicate all of these different opulences of Bhagavan. Particularly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the most renounced that Prabhupada writes how he said nobody could compare sannyas to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was so strict, so renounced. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also was so attractive, so tall and so lotus eyes and arms down to his knees and all all the the, the, the features of his body were attractive and uh, appealing to, pe to, to people. So that when he would go and chant, when he, when he was preaching, people couldn't help but follow him and be attracted. And similarly, of course, this is true for all the different incarnations of the Lord. Prabhupada, oh, Jadarani was painting Lord Varaha and she was describing that, you know, to paint a boar, boars are not very beautiful, Prabhupada. So how will I paint him? What, how, can, how to do it, you know? I, it's a bit difficult for me to think how to... But Prabhupada said, well, you have to make him... him he's always attractive. Even when he comes as a boar, he's attractive. So this is the Supreme Lord. This is his opulence. He's not lacking in any way. Because everything comes from him. Aham sarvasha prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I am the source of everything material and spiritual. The wise who know this worship me with all their love. So everything comes from the Lord. Everything is from him. It means he has everything himself. It's not that he's given it all away and there's nothing left for him. No. He's complete, right? Just like when we give Krishna consciousness, when we preach Krishna consciousness, some people, oh, there was that Bengali man, the rascal who said that, he put his hand on the forehead of the disciple, he said, now I've given you all my shakti. I have nothing left for myself. I'm finished now. I've given you everything. Put his hand on his head, Said, I'm giving you all my power. Prabhupada said, what's, what's this nonsense? How is it like that? Just like the Panchatattva. They, Lord Krishna came, he brought with him a storehouse of love of God. But the contents were kept locked. But when the Panchatattva came, they plundered the storehouse. They broke open the storehouse and they plundered all the contents. And they distributed it everywhere. And there was no scarcity. The more they distributed, the more the supply increased hundreds of times. Similarly, when we give the Maha Mantra to people, does it mean we're losing ourselves by giving it to others? Oh, I'm giving the power, I'm giving this mantra away to someone. I won't have any, there will be nothing left for me. <laughs> no, the more we give the Maha Mantra, the more we give Krishna consciousness to others, the more we get it ourselves. It's the nature of spiritual energy. Where there is no hoarding, there is no scarcity. Right? And we can see in Mayapur Dham, we're living here, we're not hoarding, rather we're helping to maintain all the temples in the Dham. How many temples are there in Navadvip Dham? Fifty something? Fifty, so I, I, he was mentioning sometimes in the morning I hear they say fifty, fifty odd temples are being maintained and we're helping, not a hundred percent, but we're helping to some extent giving them supply because they're all in some difficulties at this time with the lockdown and cut the virus. And so we help. And the more we help, the more Mayapur flourishes. We don't suffer. We don't think, oh, we have to maintain Mayapur. We can't help you. No, we help, but we're giving. We try to help everyone. So this is Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada was describing 
in Los Angeles years ago in Prabhupada's time, he said, we are, we are spending $2,000 rent for the place, another $2,000 for the maintenance of devotees. Every month we need at least $5,000. He said, nobody's working. Where does it come from? He said, can anybody do it? Every month, $5,000 expenses in Prabhupada's time? You know, $5,000 expense, big expense. He said, but we're inviting everyone, come eat, come and take prasadam here. How is it possible? Only by the grace of Krishna, as Krishna says, Ananyas chintayanto mamti gyan paryapasit. No, no, no. What's the verse? Uh, for one who meditates on my transcendental form and worships me with... For him I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Huh? Mm. How does the verse begin? Yoga kshema vahamiyaham. Yes. What's the first word? Anya. An ananya ananya chintyanto mamte gyan paryupa. Okay. Okay, I have to r brush up my slokas here. This is really bad. <laughs> Not even knowing Bhagavad Gita slokas. I have to. Very important. Yoga Shemaham Bahamiyam. Very, very well known. Anyway, the point. Krishna says. Worship me with love, I carry what you lack, I preserve what you have. This is the idea. Krishna can do it. Krishna is no poor man, right? Krishna said, he's promising, I, I will carry what you like something, you, whatever you have, don't worry, you won't lose it, I will maintain it. No, we don't have to worry. We just have to take shelter of Krishna. Worship him with love. He wants our love. That's the important thing. Not that we just want to enjoy his opulences. Right? That's, that would be the wrong mood. Dhruva Maharaj was a bit like that in the beginning. He was thinking, I want to get the kingdom. But after he'd done six months of austerity there in... Uh, Vrindavan there at the, that uh, Ghat, what's in, uh, Mad, Madhuvan, and Madhuvan he was doing his tapasya for six months. And Narada Muni had given him mantra and told him how to do everything. And so he'd become greatly purified. And when the Lord appeared to him, then, Swamin Kritartosmi Varam Nanyachi. Now I am fully satisfied. Now I don't need anything else. Because the Lord has come. We've got the Lord. I don't need the kingdom. I don't want to be the kingdom anymore. I don't want it. But you're going to get it anyway, Prabhu. <laughs> Dhruva Maharaj had to take it anyway. The Lord put him in. You wanted it. You're going to have to take it now. But actually for Dhruva Maharaj... He saw Swamin Kritatosmi Varam Nayachi. I came here looking for pieces of glass and I have found the most beautiful jewel. So that is Krishna consciousness, right? Material desires are like broken glass, useless. But Krishna consciousness is the most beautiful jewel. So when we actually get Krishna consciousness, then we are fully satisfied. Mystic powers, that's not what you want. Somebody may be thinking like that initially. But if they take up bhakti yoga, if they work sincerely in Krishna consciousness, we'll realize all of these different desires are insignificant, meaningless. We have to 
take to the process, so we have to apply the process, carefully hearing and chanting. And we see how all of these material desires are just blown away in the wind, right? The, whatever thoughts we may have for enjoying the material world, they're all forgotten when we come to Krishna consciousness. The more we become absorbed in the service of Krishna, the more we are appreciating the transcendental nature. On the material platform, there is no real satisfaction. Mystic powers and opulences, all of these things are nothing to the, to the pure devotees. Pure devotees have no interest in these things. They can be offered to the devotees, but the devotees just have, have no, it's not, no, there's no attraction there, there's nothing. To, take, to capture their mind. And we see from the lives of great devotees how they were offered so many opulences. I remember even different, some of our devotees in ISKCON, just like uh, Indra Prabhu. You know, yesterday was Indra's disappearance day that we had a 24-hour kirtan from Australia. So, Indra Prabhu you know, he's a very talented musician. So, there was one really popular group, a musical group, you know, a pop group, and they wanted Indra to join their group. But Indra said, no way, you know. <laughs> Not interested, you know. You know. For somebody else, you know, the opportunity to get in a really famous, a big name pop group, Wow, you know, big chance, you know, you're famous, you make a lot of money, you'll be up in the, in the bright lights, you know, you become a big name. But for a devotee, forget it, you know. <laughs> no meaning, it has, means nothing to a devotee. So that, that is an example of Krishna consciousness. And there are many other examples. Devotees, parents try to attract them, promising them wealth. The business, our family business is going to be yours, you know. All the family property is yours. But the devotee thinks, no, I'm happy here. Just, you know, look, you're happy. Look, you wear this, this blank, this sheet around you. You don't even a pair of pants, you're just wearing this cloth and you're just sitting on the floor eating your rice and dal every day. Come home and we'll, get, we'll feed you. No, no, no. <laughs> For, there's not, no attraction anymore. The opulence of the, what, we, what people think is opulence in the material world has no value to a devotee in Krishna Consciousness. So, we're getting so much pleasure and satisfaction in the service of Krishna. So that is, that is Krishna's transcendental potency that he acts on the heart of the devotee. Because Krishna can give everything and he can give that inner peace, he can give that satisfaction, he can give that happiness, it's all there with Krishna. But if we see something separate from Krishna, that is the Maya. Just like in the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam, in the first sloka, Krishna is saying everything comes from him. Then the second sloka is described, if you think there's anything separate from me, that is maya. That is the illusion in darkness. The shadow in the darkness. So, this is a fact. That there's actually nothing separate from Krishna. We, therefore, we dedicate our lives in Krishna's service. We don't want 
anything more. We just simply pray as Lord Chaitanya prayed. All I want is in Nadanam na Janam na Sundarim Kavitam Vajagadi Shakamaye Mama Janmani Janmanishware Bhavatad Bhakti Rahaita. That I don't want wealth, I don't want followers, I don't want so many praise, beautiful poetry, glorifying me. I simply want devotional service, birth after birth. We don't even want liberation. Liberation is insignificant for the devotee. Uh, Bhuva Mangal Thakur describes that when he is engaged in the service of the Lord, he sees liberation standing with his arms folded, waiting to serve him. But devotees, but that's okay. You, you <laughs> I'm busy. I'm doing my service for Krishna. So liberation has no attraction for the devotee. Hare Krishna. Some discussion, comments, Prabhu. Now I have nothing left. And uh, Prabhupada ridiculed that. And uh, the more you give the holy name, the more mercy you get. You want to shed any light on the reason why Gadadhar Pandit, when he said, oh, I shared my mantra that my spiritual master gave to me with someone else, and I'm not feeling the potency in my chanting anymore. Lord Chaitanya, could you please give me the mantra again? And of course, Lord Chaitanya said, oh, that's thin ice you're treading on. Your spiritual master's there and you're take, trying to take shelter, get the mantra from someone else. You wait till he comes and then you can ask to hear the mantra from him again. Do you want to comment on why he would lose potency in, the, in that circumstance, situation? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm why did the mantra, after Gadarhar Pandit had given the mantra to someone else, why did he feel he wasn't having the same potency in the mantra anymore? I was hoping to hear from you, but my thoughts were that the mantra must have been, he must have been instructed not to share it with others. I suppose like Ramanujacharya, but he did, and maybe the offense of disobeying his spiritual master may have uh, reduced his feeling of blessings in chanting the holy name or the mantra. So Rajendranandana Prabhu's opinion is that maybe the spiritual master had given him the mantra confidentially and requested it should not be distributed. But we see that Ramanuja you know, he was also given mantra and the guru told him confidential mantra, keep it secret. And so Ramanuja went to the marketplace and began to give it out to everyone. And when the guru heard, he was upset. And he came and argued, told him, why are you doing this? I told you it's confidential. But Ramanuja replied that, well, everyone, you said the mantra can liberate. I want, it, I want everyone to be liberated. And so Guru appreciated that thinking of Ramanuja. He accepted. So how about Gadarhar? That his mantra, he said, gave it to someone. I don't, we, we need to know what, what were the circumstances. Who did he give it to? It's a little difficult to say, but any comments? Well, the main lesson that is given is that if your spiritual master is there, don't turn to somebody else for 
uh, for the mantra, yeah. to get the mantra again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to get the mantra from the guru, not from somebody else. Even if it's Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> even Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there himself. But he says, no, you go to your guru and get the mantra. Get it from your guru. So Godahar's guru was Pundarik Vijaniri. And Pundarik Vijaniri is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So Pundarik Vijaniri is like, he's on a higher, he's, he's, he's like the god brother of Lord Chaitanya's guru. So certainly Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have great respect for Pundarik, and he did, of course he had very great respect for Pundarik Vijaniri. So that's, that would be one reason also, because of his respect for Pundarik Vijaniri, he wanted Gadahar, you go and take the mantra from your guru. But can mantras lose their potency? We know the Hare Krishna mantra certainly doesn't lose its potency. And the more we distribute the Maha mantra, the more powerful it becomes. That's maybe special, the power of the Maha mantra, that it can be chanted by everyone, anywhere. But other mantras, like Gayatri Mantra, one has to be in the mode of goodness. One should be firmly situated in the mode of goodness to chant Gayatri Mantra. There's qualifications. So some mantra, different mantras will have different qualifications. But for Hare Krishna Mantra, for everyone, everyone can chant without consideration who's qualified and who's not. Even the drunkards can chant Hare Krishna. Prabhupada had a dream. He said, in my dream I saw the drunkards were also chanting Hare Krishna and becoming devotees. So one devotee said, Prabhupada, were any devotees becoming drunkards? <laughs> And Prabhupada said, no, and how can that? He said, no, their lives are already changed, they're already devoted. How they can become drunk? <laughs> mm. Thank you. Most uh, respect to obeisances unto Maharaj. A mystic yogi, is it difficult for him to study Krishna consciousness? And they are spending so many lifetimes to learn how to float on the water and how to bend the spoon by their mind. Why Krishna have to, why Krishna have to arrange such roles in this material world? Why Krishna, why Krishna arrange this kind of people in this material world? Why Krishna arranges this kind of pe these kind of people who want mystic powers in this material world? Well, we have to understand there's all kinds of people here. If to think that, you know, nobody should want... If you have something, there will always be people who want to get that kind of thing. You display something, people want it. You know, even it's the most useless, useless thing. You know, <laughs> you, you see so many stupid things being sold in the shops and the store. And people go and they purchase them. You know, just look at the, the Hong Kong oil painting thing, you know. They, had the, they would produce these oil paintings from Hong Kong or from China, the factory oil paintings. You know, just horrible paintings, you know, terrible things. But people buy them. And, <laughs> and for, for some years, our movement, devotees in, in the West were making money to build temples and do different projects by distributing oil paintings. 
You know, people buy so many strange things. So certainly, you have things like mystic powers, you'll get some people who want it, who want... We know, they, they put on the cigarette packet, smoking is dangerous to health. More people are smoking. Still more people smoking. Drugs can kill you. So many people taking drugs, big problem. And there's so many things. You have something, the economic law, supply creates a demand. So her question is, why did Krishna supply these things? <laughs> because Krishna himself, he has all of these things. He has them. So other people, they want them. Oh, Krishna's got them. I want to get that. Krishna's got great power. I want to get his power. Krishna's got the wealth. We know a lot of people want wealth. Beauty. Look at the, how big a business it is. Beauty parlors. You go shopping. Most, nearly all the shops are for the skin <laughs> and the hair. So that people can look more beautiful, especially the, the fair sex, you know. They spend all their time and money decorating the body. Beauty. People want wealth, they want beauty, they want fame. People want fame. <laughs> we. I remember one time in Hong Kong, we had one, uh, there was one lady, she was an actress from Bombay and she'd come to visit the temple with her husband and she asked Tamal Krishna Maharaj, please bless me that I can be famous. You know, it's very common, people want to be fair, very, they want to be famous. They'll make great efforts to, to get fame. So Krishna is the most famous knowledge. People study so much, education, big business, to get education. Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita on the battlefield in a couple of hours. We study it our whole life, under, trying to understand it deeper. So, people want all of these things. Krishna has them, other people want them. Renunciation, some people also want that. So, the mystic cities are also attractive. People want to get them. Why does Krishna have them? It's, everything is His. It's all in Him. Because I explained, He's there as a super soul, very tiny, very small, and he's also there as Mahavishnu, very great. He's smaller than the smallest, bigger than the biggest. He has all powers. He's holding the planets. They're floating in space because they're under his control. They're in his grip. We take something in our hand, hold something in our hand, as soon as I let go, it falls to the ground. But Krishna is holding everything by his mystic potency. So his mystic potencies are there. He's using it to maintain this whole creation. But people want these things. We want to compete with Krishna, God's competitor. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of people competing. When you were given that nice answer, Maharaj, I was thinking of Uddhava Gita in the 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. And Lord Krishna explains to Uddhava that if you meditate on particular uh, Vishnu forms, that if you become absorbed, and reach samadhi on, in meditation on particular forms, you get particular siddhis, mystic opulences, the eight main ones, and then there's some subsidiary ones also. And the thought came to mind that 
or why is that offer there? Uh, Krishna hopes that those who have material desires, he wants us to approach him because the hope is, and it's an eventual thing if not immediate, but sooner or later that purification takes place like it did with Dhruva Maharaj and they realize, oh, the mystic potencies I wanted, what a waste. I want to have service for the Lord of my life, the Lord of my heart, like that. So these things are there in the Vedic literatures for the different desires, the level of consciousness of different living entities to entice them to come to God, come to God. And in that way, they become purified gradually. Okay. So Rajendranandana Prabhu is pointing out how these things are there in God, that when we want them, we'll, we'll be attracted to Krishna also. And we'll go to Krishna to get them and we'll become purified and end up becoming devotees, just like Dhruva Maharaj. He wanted the kingdom, but when he saw Krishna, he realized he really wanted Krishna. So all of these different opulences of the Lord are there to attract all of us, that we can come ultimately to take shelter of Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Kaur Premanande. Srila Prabhupada, there's a mystic story. And Prabhupada's telling how the yogis, they take bath in the uh, Alalabad, in the Ganga there, or three, uh, three, three venues. Anyway, they take bath in the holy river, Ganges, and then they come, dip down and they come up in another river, Kaveri in South India. And Prabhupada said, he said, yes, the yogis can do this. He said, I have seen. Yes, they can do he has seen what? He said, I have seen. Oh, he's seen them go in the water and come up? Yeah, they went down in uh, Allahabad and <laughs> come up in the Kaveria. And Jaipitaka Maharaj was telling the story. He said, what does it mean? If Prabhupada saw them going under the water there and come <laughs> out of the water, it means he was there also. <laughs> he, he was there also, otherwise he wouldn't know. He said, yes, I have seen. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Jai. <laughs> if Bhakti Siddhanta Das, our Prabhu was here, he'd say a lot of those mystic stories with Srila Prabhupada, but there's one I remember where he was on a train and he was looking out the window uh, for some time in a meditative way, and I believe it was Shruta Kirti Prabhu asked him, what are, you, what are you looking at or what are you thinking of Srila Prabhupada? And he said, oh, I was just riding on the rays of the sun to the sun planet. A mystic, a mystic city. I was riding on the rays of the sun to the sun planet. Which is one of the mystic cities. Jai, Srila Prabhupada ki, Jai. <laughs>